Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk to you about the books that I've been sent or bought recently. As always, all the books I mentioned will be linked in the description box down below. Now first off, I've been sent quite a few books for events that I'm chairing. So as you're watching this, I'm currently on book tour. I'll leave details down below in case I'm coming to somewhere where you happen to be and you'd like to come along. I'm doing events for my books, but also events with authors at book festivals because right now it's festival season in the UK. So first of all, I was sent this book here, which is The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. This is a dystopian that's written in quite poetic prose. It's quite sparse. I'm doing an event with Megan Hunter and with Sarah Moss at the Birmingham Book Festival on Saturday the 6th of October. We'll be talking about how we craft strange short fiction. I have already read Megan's book and um, I have the hard cover of this so I thought I would give a copy of this away. So if you would like to be in with a chance of winning this just let me know in a comment down below. I'll pick a winner on the 15th of October and the giveaway is open internationally. Um, I'll, pick a I'll pick a winner by using a random number generator. As well as doing an event with Megan and Sarah, I'm also chairing an event with Olivia Lan. This isn't about my book at all, this is solely about hers, so I'll just be chatting to her about the way she writes. As I've mentioned in videos before, I have the utmost respect for Olivia Lang, and this is a very short book. It's a novel about a woman called Kathy who's contemplating the 21st century that we live in in the age of Trump and Brexit. I'm hoping it's gonna be a bit like Ali Smith's quartet that she's doing at the moment, as it's very immediate. So I'll be reading that one soon and talking about it, and I'm doing an event with Olivia at Cheltenham on Saturday the 13th of October. On Saturday the 20th of October, I'm doing an event in Oxford with Kieran Millwood Hargrave and with Jesse Burton. I'll pick up Jesse's book in a second. But Kieran's book is a middle grade book called The Way Past Winter. I've read her previous two novels. This is her third. And this has elements, I think, of uh, Philip Pullman in Kieran and I both love Philip a lot. This is about a young girl called Mila who wakes up to discover that her young brother Oscar has vanished. She thinks that he's followed someone in the dark, which is very unlike him. She then discovers that all of the boys in the village have gone apart from one who's called Rune. So they set off together to the frozen north to try and find him. And Jessie's book. Jessie is the author of The Miniaturist and The Muse. Um, this is her first book for children. It's called The Restless Girls, which is a feminist retelling of the 12 dancing princesses. And it's illustrated by Angela Barrett. So it's about a group of sisters who are locked away because their father is, a, is worried that something bad might happen to them. And then they fight for their freedom. I'm just gonna find you an illustration to look at. There we go, it looks very, very beautiful. So I'll be reading this one very soon and Jesse, Kieran and I will be talking about feminism and fairy tales at Oxford Blackwell's Westgate on Saturday the 20th of October, details down below. I then bought this on the recommendation of one of you guys, it's called The Virginia State Colony for Epileptics and Feeble-Minded. I bought this because I'm always on the lookout for poetry, novels, any kind of book with good representation of disfigurement and disability. I mentioned before, because I have a whole playlist on these topics that I'm gonna do a book recommendations video and um, I'm, I am gonna do that. I just don't have a lot of books to recommend because not all of them are that great. So what I'm gonna do is talk you through books I have read and then books that are on my TBR and the pros and cons of all of those things. So this is a poetry collection that I hope will be a good one. Um, likewise, I bought Liminal by B. Lewis. Um, the blurb of this is, um, Slightly clumsy, it says, Esther, a pregnant amputee, and her husband Dan is seeking a new life, setting up home, restoring an abandoned railway station called Rosgill, far away in the Scottish Highlands. Spanning the course of a week, B. Lewis's gothic fantasia follows Esther as her marriage, life, and body begin to dramatically change. By day, she is isolated physically and mentally within her marriage and her new environment. By night, she explores a forbidding forest, pursued by a shadowy figure. This could be brilliant, but it could also really really not be, so um, I'm entering it very, very hopefully. Then I was sent this book unsolicited, but I thought it sounded really good, so I'm gonna be keeping it. I'll just undo this beautiful ribbon. So this is a book that is giving me the same feelings as Bitter Oranges by Claire Fuller. Bitter Orange? Bitter Oranges. Oranges by Claire Fuller, which I read recently and really enjoyed. It's set in June 1914, and a young woman called Clara Waterfield is summoned to a large stone house in Gloucestershire. Her task is to fill a greenhouse with exotic plants from Kew Gardens to create a private paradise for the owner of Shadowbrook, but then it's just a bit creepy and things seem to start to go wrong. 
So um, I'm definitely intrigued by that. So it's House of Glass by Susan Fletcher. I was also sent this unsolicited, but it sounds brilliant, so I'm keeping it. It's called A Tapestry of Tales, Brunt Bogart by David Gregus. Um, and it says it's a collection of folk tales where you enter a old world that's like a half-remembered dream where a grey child is journeying in search of his mother. You may follow him, it says, but if you do, a part of you will never come back. So this sounds a bit like John Connolly's The Book of Lost Things, which I really enjoyed, and you know, anything to do with folk tales, and I'm there. I was also sent this, which is a bind-up of Fiona Benson's Vertigo and Ghost. Um, she was one of the poets that we shortlisted for this year's Forward Prize for Best Single Poem. Um, and I'm really interested to read more of her work. So this is coming out next year. Does it say when? Does it say when? Yes, the 3rd of January, which is going to come around really, really quickly, I think. So I'll let you know more once I have read it, and I'll link her shortlisted poem in the description box down below. Next, I have this, which I'm so excited about. This is Lanny by the lovely Max Porter. He is the author of Grief is a Thing with Feathers. Now, this isn't coming out for a while. It is out in March. Um, so I will talk about it nearer the time, but you know how much I enjoyed his first book, Grief is a Thing with Feathers, so I'm super excited to get to this. And the blurb says, It came in the sound of a song, warm on his creaturely breath. My singing child, bringing me gifts, a second or two before I realise it's not him. Lanny? So really, I'm going into this not knowing much about it at all, but Max did tell me it's his, it's his little fairy tale, so that makes me even more excited. I'll leave a link down below to the podcast that I did with Max where we talked about grief. Next on the pile is something that relates to a book but is not a book. So last week my new children's picture book Franklin and Luna Go to the Moon was released and it looks like this. Um, I will leave details down below if you'd like to go and find out more and I also read the beginning of it in another video which I'll also link down below but I received this in the post which is a tote a tote book, a tote bag, that says Franklin's Book Club on it, which is very exciting. You'll be able to track this down at some bookshops in the UK um, in celebration with both the release of Franklin and Luna Go to the Moon and Books on My Bag, which is a celebration of bookshops, which is at the beginning of October. I don't know which bookshops these will be available in. They are given to bookshops who order a certain number of the books, and the bookshops also receive Franklin and Luna bunting, which is rather cool. So keep your eyes out eyes out, eyes peeled, words, words, for both of those things. Um, and if you purchase a copy of the book, they may give you one of these totes. So ask at your local bookshop. Then I was sent this, which is one of my most anticipated releases for next year. I think it's out in March or May next year, May, not until May. Okay, so I will talk about it nearer the time, but this is The Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil. Um, this is historical fiction, but it's getting a lot of hype. So it says, London, 1850. The Great Exhibition is being built in Hyde Park. Among the crowd, watching the spectacle, two people meet. For Iris, an aspiring artist, it is the encounter of a moment, forgotten seconds later. But for Silas, a collector entranced by the strange and beautiful, the meeting marks a new beginning. So it's all about pre-Raphaelite artists, it's about the Great Exhibition, which is something that I'm particularly fascinated with. Um, and you should all follow Elizabeth McNeil on Instagram because she's a potter and she makes beautiful pottery. I'm also giving away a copy of The Doll Factory in a previous video, which I'll link down below because that giveaway is still open as I'm uploading this. Um, nearly there. So second to last, we have this, which is Tales from the Inner City. I am super excited about this. It's by Sean Tan. It's the follow-up to his Tales from Outer Suburbia. Sean is an amazing artist um, and story writer. I'll show you some of the pictures in here. He uses magical realism. Um, his graphic novel, The Arrival, I think is probably my favourite ever graphic novel. Um, so these are a series of magical realist short stories. As I said, I really love Tales from Outer Suburbia. And this feels much more substantial than that one too, much longer. So I'm eager to read that one. And then finally, I have this from Anderson Press, which is called Mary and Frankenstein by Linda Bailey and Julia Sada. Now, I showed you a picture book called The List which is beautiful. This is the same illustrator. So this is about how Mary Shelley created Frankenstein 
and it is so beautifully illustrated. So I'll be reading this one soon and talking about it in a wrap up. And um, so those are all the books that I had to talk to you about today. As I said, they're all linked in the description box down below. If you'd like to be in with the chance of winning The End We Start From, let me know when you leave a comment. Also, let me know what you've been picking up recently or any of these books you might check out. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll speak to you very soon. Lots of books, love. Bye.